to them. How are you doing, mate? I literally, I'm on good vibes. I'm feeling blessed. Life is treating me well. And yeah, picked up draw. Basically, had this little job, cash in hand. So, um, managed to pick up some weed. The weed is banging as well. And yeah. Hope you're on good vibes. You're staying blessed. Life is treating you well. As always. I just thought I'd come on. Say what well, I want. And yeah. Well, I haven't been smoking weed a lot. At least you take a couple puffs and I'll start feeling it. I mean, this is good weed anyway. Like, it is good weed, it's very strong, but it's even stronger because I haven't been smoking that much. such a lightweight fuck I mean I've always been a lightweight but even more so mate the days of chain smoking zoots are over they're not over but they're just they're just having weed mate they just have to have weed they've been fucking busy driving about like I said I had a van just on the old rental thing at the moment was uh, very good actually. Yeah, life has changed a lot actually. And uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, it's going well. And yeah, but it's been it's been a bit mad. I've done a lot of travelling, and uh, I took a little break. Like I'd obviously have my tr my plans to go across England, which I managed to do. I only got as far as just outside of Manchester. Just going from place to place. Just a little ride, mate. Like, literally just a little ride. Nothing special. And when I first come back from Amsterdam, like, I said to myself, right, I'm going to go back to England. And I was in the shittest mood. I was, I was in the shittest mood ever because, like, the whole airport situation, like, okay, basically, like, I explained, but I'll explain again. Basically... Fucking, I was out, <clears throat> partying, duh, 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 chilling, relaxing, like vibes, rooftop parties, housework parties, everything, just constant parties. <laughs> I was chilling in between, just smoking weed, but smoking weed goes without saying. And then obviously my passport was stolen. Passport, wallets, phones, everything. I had three phones, three smartphones, and two brick phones. Some weed, backy, my passport, my wallet, everything, my money, it's all gone. I just woke up on a tram, just in the middle of nowhere, just going around, just like, what the fuck, like, anyway, like, <laughs> oh, wow, 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 like, that happened, and I was like, no, nope, I'm going to stay, because I'd obviously just been released from prison, so I, it was just completely unexpected, like, I just, I don't know what I expected, but I just didn't expect that to happen, anyway, I had to come back, so I was chilling with this guy, I was walking down the street, down by Roken, and like, I met this guy who was on the bench with his guitar and he was like, hey man, like, do you know of any places to like stay, like hotels and that? Just come, like I busk and do music. I came to Amsterdam for a concert yesterday. I finished the concert and now I'm just fucking out and about. So I was like, yeah, sure man, he was from Turkey. So I was like, yeah, sure man. Like literally, um, I'll let you go around, show you a few places, this, this, this. Anyway, found him a hotel. 
come out, got some weed, smoking weed. And he wanted to go red light. He was saying, oh, red light, red light, red light, red light. And fucking, I was like, oh, like, okay, red light is okay. Red light is good. Like, I chill in the red light a lot, like, when I was there. But, like, me and prostitution, like, I don't see the point in paying for sex. Like, you can quite easily go anywhere. And especially in Dam, you can go to the coffee shop. It's just me, a nice stoner girl, and vibe, and obviously, yeah. But, yeah. Most people want to just fucking the experience in this city. Anyway, we went to the red light district. And he kept going on about the peep show. So, like, the peep show is, like, just naked people, basically. And you just, like, watch. But there's just bare people watching. Like, there's just bare people watching. And you pay one euro and you just walk around. It lasts, like, I don't know, five minutes, if that. And, yeah. So, I was standing outside of this peep show waiting for him. Fucking smoking a fag. And then these two guys walk past. Now, <coughs> he was speaking. He had a Manchester accent. So I was like, 0161 Manny on the map, right? As he walked by. And he was like, oh, yeah, bro, what are you saying? Da, 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 da. I was like, you're from England. I was like, yeah. And then, so, long story short, we was just chatting, 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 chatting. And I was vibing, telling what had happened about my passport and this, this, this. Man like Graham Taylor, literally. And fucking, he had a friend, and his friend was a guy that I'd met in January when I was staying in Alkmaar, which is like a small little village. And yeah, so I had met him there already, but then three months later, or even four, no, longer than three months actually, because this was the end, this is the last day, so, hmm, eight months I'd say, seven or eight months later, I would meet him again. Mm, no, seven months. Yeah, seven months later, because it's July. July is the seventh. So yeah, seven months later, I'd meet him again. So fucking basically, like I was like, what the fuck? Like he he knows this guy that I'd randomly just said hello to, and I didn't see that he was with this guy, and there was like friends from childhood, but it was his birthday. Not yeah, it was the guy that I'd met on his birthday, and there was just out in Amsterdam who needed to come to visit him. So anyway, we all just chilled together. My friend came out of the peep show, he enjoyed it, and we all just was chilling together. So anyway, I was telling him about I'd lost my passport and this, 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 and he was like, bro, why are you not doing nothing about it? Why are you just continuing to just party and fucking smoke weed when, like, your funds is really not really there? You fucking got no passport, no ID, no nothing, like. So I was like, all right, okay, cool. And then he was like, what do you need to do? Like, you need to sort it out. Like, he was getting well sketched out for me. Like, how can you just be in a country with no passport and just be still continuing to live life as if nothing's happened? <laughs> <coughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, live in the moment, live in the moment. However, living in the moment just was, I was just going too far with it. Anyway, I was like, fuck it. I don't want to go back to England. I don't want to go back to England. And then fucking... I went to England, but I went to the at first. I went to the police station because you have to report it stolen. They literally just give you a form. People lose their passports every day. I think they said I was like the 40th or 50th person to come in from, and this was at like 11 or 12 in the morning. So I was literally like the 50th person to report since they opened. So they just literally just fling you a form and like you just leave. Like it's not even a big deal. Like you don't even have to do nothing. So anyway, like I filled out that form. Well, I started to fill it out, and then I was like, fuck this, this is bollocks. Screwed it up and chucked it in the bin. Now, basically, like, I kept doing that. Like, I kept being like, no, bun, bun, bun. So anyway, I, he was like to me, right, okay, we've been to the police station. What else do you want to do? Whatever you need to do, I'll back it. Like, literally, whatever you need to do, I'll back it. Now, bearing in mind, I've just met this guy randomly on the street, and he's just like, I heard what I've got to say, and he's like, fuck it. Like, I'm vibing with you. Like, let's just fucking, I'll help you out. Like, literally, a real heart of gold, mate. Like, literally. Anyway, fucking, we went to the airport. I was like, I need to go to the airport, really. And I just sorted it out there. And so I went to the airport and fucking, like, I went to the immigration place. And, like, I was speaking to them. And I was like, oh, we can't let you fly without a passport. There's nothing we can do about it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but there must be some way that you can get me back to England. Like, I just want to go back to England, like. 
Like, I just had enough of Amsterdam. Like, everything just kept going wrong. Like, literally, everything kept going wrong. I'd literally just have the most craziest nights, but at the end of it, I'd just be completely just destroyed, like, literally. So, like, it was fun, but then the fun and the bad stuff, it wasn't really balancing itself out. Like, it was just too many sketchy situations. That same night, I was in a car, and I'd been pulled over by the police. And the driver was wanted, but we didn't know he was wanted. And he didn't even know he was wanted. Like, the warrant was, like, five or six years old, but, like, he just managed to get away with it. And then, because we was driving early morning, he was just fucked. Like, yeah, they just pulled him over. And obviously, he was trying to drive, like, straight. Or he was trying to drive not bait and that, but, yeah, they just clocked it straight away. Anyway, that happened as well, and it was just, like, a near miss, because basically, the fucking... was outside Heineke Museum, like, on Weiselklapp, which is where we got stopped. And then basically, the police just took him away. That was perfectly fine, perfectly chilled, nice about him. Nice about it, that was kind to him and everything. But yeah, the police just took him away. But as soon as I had, like, buried in mind, I've just come from prison. So like, like the foreign office, like the UK foreign office, the British embassy, they, they send you like a, um, a, a prison pack, like on behalf of the government, just a standard if you're a foreigner in another country in prison. So they sent a pack, so there was like certain criminal terms like lawyer, criminal court, wretch bank, advocate, this is like lawyer, criminal court, things like this, yeah, that like they send you to translate from Dutch to English. So that you know, like if you're in court, like you know what's being said roughly. So I'm sitting in the back of this car here in wretch bank, advocate, and I'm thinking this is not good, mate. This is really not good. Like I'm hearing all these criminal terms in Dutch, which I recognize, and I'm thinking this is bad. Anyway, they arrest him, and they literally, like normally, yeah, you, the whole car would get searched, everyone would get searched, this, this, this. They literally just took him away in the police car, drove off, and left us with the engine running, the keys in ignition, in the back of the car. There was three of us, and obviously the driver. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? And obviously the guy up front, the passenger, is his friend. He's Dutch. Then we've got an American. And then we've got another guy who's English from Nottingham. So it's like, basically, like, he's like, oh, well, this is Amsterdam. This is the police. Da, da, da. Like, we've just got to go. Like, he's he's gone now. That's it. So anyway, he gets in the car. He's also fucked and just drives back home. And then I have to walk from their house, Weiselkraut, all the way back to Centrum, which was just fucking long. Like, it's not that bad, but just... Yeah, after a night out, it's just not the one. So, basically, back to the airport. I was at the airport and I was just chilling. And like, I was like, I need to get this sorted. No one would help me and I was just getting really stressed out. Anyway, man like Graham, he was like, right, let me search up on my phone, like what, what to like, what to call in that. Anyway, he found bare, like, just all these different government numbers. And then when I fucking finally did, like, get hold of the government number, like, there was another secret government number which he had to ring. And, yeah, eventually got through to the home office and there was some department in the home office. So, basically, like, you have to go through all these different government departments and then finally you'll get to speak to someone. So, anyway, we was on the phone for, like, maybe four hours just, like, talking it through. Bear in mind, we got there, like, early. It's, like, it must have been, like, one in the afternoon. And we didn't leave there till half eleven at night, like, literally. And, like, literally, he just solidly just bow, 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 was constantly at it. And then, finally, I spoke to someone because he was, like, liaising with it because I was telling him, like, it just can't be fucked. Like, it's just effort and there's forms and just, oh, it's just so many pointless questions and it's just, like, oh. Anyway... He was like, fuck that, bruv, like, stop making excuses, I'll just sort it out for you. But when the time comes, just make sure you get on the plane. Anyway, so, basically, I called them, and, uh, they, they, uh, they said to me, right, okay, this is what's gonna happen, we'll allow you to fly. But before that, I've missed a bit, sorry, before that, I had to purchase a ticket. So, um, I went to social services, and I said to them, look, can you help me out, go back to England? And they was like, yeah, sure. Then they put my name in the computer and they was like, wait, hang on a minute. We've already paid for your flight back to England. We've given you this, we've given you that, we've given you this. And like all my file was there of what they'd, all, that the government had just given me. Like literally, when, I, when, when I'd used my fucking get out of jail free cards, like literally. 
and like basically I'd used them all up so they was like super pissed with me and they was like just not wanting to help me and as soon as they found it out like the Dutch are just very blunt and they're just very direct and just like well we've helped you and you didn't take it so tough shit like literally like they'll obviously still go as far as they need to but they won't go that far because obviously they've already done it and like I took the piss basically so basically Graham like booked the ticket for me like he booked the flight out of England for me and then yeah so basically I thought I could I had an ID I managed to get my ID my ID was at a bike storage place because you have to put your ID down to rent a bike and I didn't rent a bike I'd rented a bike first time but I just used to store my shit there because I had bare shit there I had my uber bag and this 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 and I was bouncing from accommodation to accommodation so there's just loads of stuff to carry around so fucking, I'd store my stuff there, but I'd left my ID there because like, yeah, I couldn't pay to store my stuff there. And then I went to prison, so that was another month out of my life, I just wasn't there. So fucking, after that, like, he was like, fuck it, I'll pay for the ticket. It was 30 quid, he was like, fuck it, I'll pay for the ticket. So he paid for my ticket back home, but then, like, I'd got my driver's license, but then I was like, oh, you can't fly in an ID. So obviously it was like, fuck. And I was like, you can get a bus and that will allow you an ID, but you can't fly. Or you can get the bus, but then you can negotiate at the other end. But flying is a no-go. So obviously he's already paid for this ticket, so I want to 100% get a plane. Plus, I didn't want to get a bus because the bus is a 10-hour drive. You've got to drive through, like, bare places and then you get into England. Like, literally. So I didn't really want to do that. But the Flix bus is only, like, €8. Euros. So it's like not that much money at all considering you're driving from like one country to another and you have to drive through like three countries in order to do that. So like it's a good deal. Anyway, fucking that's when he started ringing all these government numbers because he's like, fuck that, let's speak to the British guys because obviously the Dutch, like I'm not a Dutch citizen so they couldn't do much. Anyway, step one had been completed. I got on the ticket. Now it's a case of having to board a plane without a passport but with a ticket and it's just like oh. anyway so from there I had to call all the numbers as I said he called all the numbers I spoke to these people and they said right okay we're gonna allow you to fly without a ticket that's actually bare questions like why are you coming back like has anyone told you to come back are you bringing anything back have you forced anything back and in the, in the end, obviously, you know they're going to be fucking checking you, searching you, this, 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 this. Which I didn't mind because it's just like, they do it anyway. But these were like bare secret departments within the home office. It's just like, I don't know, it's just all a bit sketchy for me. And I was just so stressed. Like, literally, I was just so stressed. I just never thought I'd be coming back to England, ever. Like, ever. Like, it was that deep. Like, literally, it was that deep. Like, it's not the worst place to be stuck in, but when he was in the specific situation I was in and there was worse situations to be in but it was just just so peak and just so crazy and up and down and just bad shit just kept happening so I was just like look just fucking bring me back to England please like literally like I'll admit like I slag off the government but on this particular occasion they did save me like literally they did save me so the following morning Obviously, it's my is my is my plane time. Like it's at seven o'clock in the morning, sharp. Like literally, so I'd need to be at the airport by five. So I had the notion I'm not going to leave. I'm just going to stay in the airport. Do you know what I mean? And that's that. So, basically, fucking, that was that. Like um, I said to myself, right, I'm going to go. I'm going to get my stuff. I'm going to leave the airport, but I'm going to get my stuff. I'm 100% going to go, because I'm bearing in mind last time, I left the airport and I went to a house party and then fucking ended up at a rooftop party and then just going over to Techno Tuesday at Malkovic. So, like, it was just a case of, yeah, 100% in my mind, I had to be strong and say, no matter what happens, no matter what invitations you get, no matter what stoner parties, smoke boats, whatever's going on, you're fucking, you're going back to England. And I really didn't want to go. So anyway, I went around collecting all my shit, like, tying up everything. And, like, basically went back to the airport and I just stayed there. So, 7 o'clock in the morning comes. I've waited, like, literally all night. Like, literally all day and all night because I got there at 1. And, like, obviously my flight wasn't until 7 o'clock the following morning. And, yeah, it was just stress. Like, literally, it was just so much stress. So I go to the check-in desk and I say, right... This is the situation, hand them all the paperwork, the police report to say that my passport's gone missing, hand them the travel warrant um, 
from uh, let them know about the travel warrant from the uh, Home Office and the UK Border Force to say that I'm allowed to travel without a passport and that the airline won't be prosecuted for allowing me to travel without a passport and then obviously show them my boarding ticket, when the boarding time is and like all the different tickets that I've got. So that was a whole rigmarole and then I was like, right, okay, I've got to call my supervisor. So the supervisor comes over, fuck, where's my light on? The supervisor comes over Yeah, the supervisor comes over and says, okay, what's going on? So I have to explain the whole thing again. And she's like, okay, no, we can't allow this, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go chat to our colleagues at British Airways. British Airways desk is just behind. And I was flying with, like, Viewling, Viewling, some dead airline anyway. So I was flying with them. And then fucking they go over to British Airways and say, no, we won't allow anyone to fly without a passport. You can't use your ID, da, 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 da. So I was like, right, okay, fuck this. Like, literally, bearing in mind, like, I had half an hour to the flight. Bearing in mind, I've been there the whole time. I've been early for this flight. I had half an hour to the flight. And then it's getting slower, less and less and less and less. And obviously, you've got to still get through security. The airport's starting to get busy because there's bare people flying to different places. So you've got to go through security, which takes fucking, like, literally up to an hour, two hours sometimes. Like, fucking, oh, mate, it was just long. So I was just getting more and more pissed, but then I was trying to stay calm, because otherwise then I'll say, oh, well, you've been abusive to staff, we're not allowing you to fly, blah, 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 blah. And this is the Netherlands, they would do that 100%. Like, they just wouldn't, they would do it straight away, whereas England, they'll still do it, but they just, they'll beat around the bush. Like, you can abuse public service workers quite a bit before you fucking get kicked out somewhere. But there, it's just like, no go. Anyway, so I was getting mad, but then I was trying to stay calm. And then fucking, it was like literally like 10 minutes. So basically I'd missed my flight. So I was going to every single desk being like, look, this is the situation. Like, I even went back down to immigration. I told them everything, like showed them everything. And I was like, no, 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 no. So anyway, I had to call the number again and then say to everything like what happened and tell them the person that I spoke to, like the number that they gave me, like this, 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 this. And it was like, okay, right, we're working it through now. And then they called me back and I was like, yep, yeah, it's been approved, like, you're allowed to fly, you can fly without a passport, like, you can use your ID, just explain to them at the gate. So basically, the UK Border Force has to tell um, the UK Border Force in, um, in London has to tell Luton, which is where I was landing, then Luton have to communicate with the airline in the Netherlands and say, yes, it's okay for me to travel without a passport. But then that message got delayed. So it was sent over, like the government had said yes, the government were expecting me, the government had marked my flight, told all the officers that would be on the ground that he's coming and he has to got a passport, it's okay, we've allowed it. But then the airlines also have to know. So they didn't know, so therefore they said, no, you can't do it, we have nothing on our system, we've got no recollection of the government saying that, like nothing has come through. So I was like, this is fucking crazy. Obviously, I've missed my plane now. The time now is like half eight, nine o'clock. And it's just like, I'm just getting mad because I know that I'm going to have to wait another day or another couple of hours at least till the evening flight. And then, because there's only specific flights that they can put you on. And then, so basically, like, I was like, okay, fine. So I kept calling back. They kept ringing me back. And then eventually, it got printed out. Like, they printed it out, like, the travel warrant was sent and then they, they allowed me but then it was jokes because basically this process took three days like literally it took three days of me going back calling them up they're saying yes it's fine this 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 and then in the morning I'd go down and then it'd be like oh there's no one there so I literally I was giving up and I was going to leave the airport but then I'd come so far and like obviously Graham had sorted me out so much and spent literally his whole entire day like sorting me out and helping me to come back to England and then fucking, like, it wasn't until the second day, well, the second night, the third day in the morning, like, fucking, oh, like, literally, I managed to finally 
get the warrant, get everything laid out. And then it was jokes, as I said, because it was those same air hostess girls that get well rude to me and be like, no, it's not going to work, da, 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 da. And then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, we've got, we've received that. Yeah, that's, that's correct. I was like, yes, I fucking know it's correct. This is what I've been fucking saying to you. But obviously, like, bare people would just make up random stories, in it, just to try and get to England. So, like, yeah, fair enough. But, yeah, um, like... That happened, I got on the plane, but then it was just so sketchy, you go through passport security, bearing in mind I had stuff pending, which is now fine anyway, but I had stuff pending that I was like, oh fuck, like literally, fuck, 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 and then I was like thinking that they'd be picking it all up and they'd just patting all the dots together and I'd just be stuck here even longer and just, yeah. <sighs> anyway, so go through um, airport security, fine. But literally, I'd smoked all my weed, everything like that. I had nothing on me. Like, I did not want to risk anything, like, anything at all, like, literally. So, like, any... Oh, sorry. Before we go through that again, at the airport, I met this guy, yeah? And, like, literally, he tried robbing my camera. And it's just jokes because that camera has survived so much, like, literally. And there's so much footage on there that I thought I'd been lost forever, like, on so many occasions. And then I always end up finding it or manage to recover it, like, literally. But then the footage has no sound, which is even more peak because, yeah, I just had the camera on the wrong fucking setting. And most of the time I used the camera, I was just, yeah, completely wait. So, yeah, just fucking random clips of just random shit, which I have recollection of, but no idea what I was actually saying. But yeah, it's kind of peak, but then at the same time, I'll put it into like an edit and just fucking, it would just be some random clips of just me just fucking out and about bit of music maybe some narration and yeah but yeah he tried to rob my camera like literally it was just well weird and like he was like smoking up with me but then like i don't know it was just like just chilling and just getting away from lean and just like oh mate just, just at the airport like literally it was just a bit weird but anyway fucking like literally like oh, mate and then he tried to fight me as well like it was at the airport as well like literally I ended up dashing across the airport, like literally. <laughs> I'm serious, like literally, I bowled across the airport from this guy, like literally. He was a fucking African guy as well, like literally. He's maybe like, I don't know, 40, maybe. Like literally. And he was just like, I don't know, Kanye 2012, mate. <laughs> but anyway, fucking, yeah, like I ended up dashing across the airport from this guy. And then he was just like, I don't know, he just started getting well freaked out. And like, literally, I was making videos at the airport and he just got well paranoid and shit. And like, he was like, oh, like he was waved, yeah, but he was like, oh, you're trying to like steal from me and this, this, this. And you're trying to like scam me and you're after me and this. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? We've literally been chilling for like the last 17 hours at this airport. Like, literally, what are you talking about? Like, Mate, he just started getting well prangy, like literally. So that was that, that was that, that unexpected thing. And bearing in mind, 100% I know, I've got all my paperwork ready. I do not want to fucking, like, do you know what I mean? Get nicked to a last minute at the airport for fighting or fucking, do you know what I mean? Or fucking, my shit get stolen by this guy. Just at the last fucking minute. Like literally, I just didn't need it. Like, just fucking disturbance at the airport. They can throw you out the airport for that as well. But literally, anyway, so fucking go through security, get through security, scan my ticket, scan my, well, I don't have a passport, so I've got to fucking present my ID, but then they've got to fucking double check it, and that happens maybe three or four times as you go through the airport and you're finally in the d departures lounge. Once I get through the departures lounge, I'm fucking just sitting there chilling, waiting by the gate, like literally right by the gate, just watching it, like literally just watching the screen, like make sure I don't fall asleep, don't nothing, I'm well tired by, the, by bearing in mind, but I just like, know nothing get on the flight like literally go through like literally I explain to them da 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 they put it in a computer it all flags up everything is fine they're like yeah that's fine welcome aboard da 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 get on the plane bro there's literally like I don't know like eight people on the plane which made me even more suspicious because it was like how can you be telling me there was no planes and I get on the plane and there's like eight people on the plane like literally so I had basically a plane to myself because they were sitting like at the back really which was kind of sus again, they probably just have people transporting me and I just didn't even know. But yeah, it was just well sus, like literally, it was some tiny little dibby plane, as I said, it was some unknown airline, like literally, and yeah, so.
So basically, fucking landed Luton. Fucking now, this is where the fuckery begins. Because once I'm in the air, that's it. I'm in the air. Like, there's no turning back. I mean, there's only eight people on the plane, and they probably were marshals, so they could have turned back. But let's just say there's no turning back. Landed at, landed at the fucking airport, like literally, I fucking fell asleep in the end, like literally, I was so shattered, I ended up just falling asleep, I was trying to stay awake and I just fell asleep, so I didn't even see coming back into England or landing, flying over England, I know I was like that, especially when I've been away for a while, just like, flying over England and like, from above, like England from the sky, anyway, landed, fucking tired as fuck, like literally all days, all fucking unwashed, dirty, fucking clothes ripped, where I've been fucking scrapping with that guy at the airport. <clears throat> fucking massive rucksack, like literally. Fucking, I had it hidden in the bushes, in the fucking park. So it was all fucking just covered in fucking dust and dirt and just ripped where it'd been in forms and shit. <laughs> and then I present myself <laughs> to this UK border officer like this year I have to go to the fucking side of where all the fucking people that wanted trying to get into the UK but all being rejected and have to be put on another flight so I'm in that queue like literally and then fucking have to present all of this fucking paperwork which is all crumpled up by now where I've had to open it and fold it and present it to everyone at all the different spots and then fucking but just finally being in the airport just like you are now in England and it's just like Fuck yes, like literally, finally, at least, at least I made it. Like literally, at least I made it because I generally thought I wasn't going to make it and then just every step, every hurdle. But like, I just didn't really think about it at the time. But like, slowly and slowly, I was just getting there, making my way, making my way, making my way. And then fucking I presented it and he was like, okay, okay. And then basically, obviously, the flight was originally booked for a certain date and it's obviously been three days since that date now. So it's saying a completely different date on the ticket. So they're like, why is it saying this date? And why did you not travel on that date? And da 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 and, Oh, mate, it's just so fucking long. So I'm there thinking, fuck. So I'm fucking explaining to them, because I'm like, I'm in England now. Like, it's fine, I've made it. Like, that's all I've got to do is fucking convince them that I'm not a fucking terrorist. That's the word they use now, openly. It used to be a fucking secret word, but now they use it everywhere. So yeah, you make sure you're not a terrorist, basically. It's fucking coming in to fucking do whatever. So, basically, he goes off, he's like, okay, fine, just bear me one moment, mate, and I'll go off and I'll double check. So I go through, and there's, like, like glass screen, so you can see through the, into the waiting area, but then there's offices which you can't see into. You can just vaguely see, like, bare people just coming in and out, or, like, maybe, like, a screen or something, but just, like, a little tiny crack through the archway of the door. So you can't really see what's going on in there, but it's just bare people coming in and out, so there's obviously shit going on. Like, literally, so, like, officers, like, police officers, like, UK Border Force, like, immigration-type people. They look like cops, but they're not cops. Anyway, fucking, they go in there, they come out, another guy comes round, he's, like, interviewing me, he's like, okay, also, what's going on, da-da-da-da-da. I explained to him this sort of situation, he's like, yep, yeah, okay. And then they just put it in, like, some system they have, and he's like, yeah, okay, welcome back. I was like, yes! Like literally, but it's just I was so serious about it, and they don't get, they didn't understand my joy and relief. Like I wasn't freaking out in the airport, but they didn't understand my joy of just to been like mission fucking complete. Like it's one of the hardest missions I've ever done, traveling without a passport on a plane. Like literally, like my hardest mission so far, and I just, oh mate, complete. Like literally, complete. Like literally, and then walking out of the airport and just being like, fuck. Like literally. Oh, mate, just had a cigarette outside the airport. Fucking by the like, little bus station area. And now I was like, right, where the fuck do I go now? Because <laughs> obviously I'm back in England, but it's like, what do I do? And that's the whole reason why I didn't want to come back to England. Because it's like, what the fuck do I do? Like, it's just a case of like, when I was in Dam, it was a new thing every single day. Like, something was happening, like something new. Like, you meet new people. Like, you just wake up and you meet people from like six different countries by the time you've woken up and you've only been up like a couple of hours and it's just like yeah it's just so many different cultures and vibes coming in and out especially if you're chilling in stoner circles like do you know what I mean like everyone's just smoking weed like do you know what I mean they might be their first day here so like you, everything is new for them so every day it's just like something new and it's just always fresh and like lively whereas I've been there for a long period of time so after a while it was just like yeah I'm used to it but then it's still something new because you meet new people constantly so 
I got back to England and I was like, fuck, like, do you know what I mean? Fuck. So when I was in the coffee shops, like people would always say, oh, Bristol this, Bristol that. And I'll be like, oh, what's this Bristol all about? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like I'm from England, but I've never been to Bristol. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Bristol. So from there, I went down south, checked in with some people locally, and then fucking moved on to Bristol, right? And now when I got there, it was sick, like it was really good. Like there was different things going on, different parties, drum and bass nights, things like that, which is obviously good from a transition to Amsterdam. It's like, yep, yeah, I'm getting the vibe. I literally, I was chilling, chilling in St. Paul's, Stokes Croft area. Like literally, and then I was living in St. Paul's for like two weeks. And then after that, I ended up moving to Bath because I went out and yeah, like yeah, I went out and uh, yeah, such and such and such and such. <laughs> Bro, come on, what does that mean? Like, what does that actually mean? But yeah, I went out and yeah. So I ended up moving to Bath and then fucking, it was the case of, I got a job, started applying for jobs there. So I was good, could see myself staying there for like the foreseeable future for now and like yeah and then it was just like weird because it was like a very posh area like very wealthy area in terms of money and there's just like loads of weird shit going on there so like <coughs> I was there and it was sick because I had a few I had a few good experiences there as well a few mad nights as well like literally so fucking I was there but then I got a job in Burger King because, as I said, I was applying for jobs and then that just saw me just working there constantly. So I was working in Burger King and it was just, like, kind of long because, like, yeah, mate, like, it's just long because, yeah, it was good, but then it was long. And it just worked you so hard, so it's just like, oh, fuck this. Anyway, I was there and then I left there because I went to Reading Festival. Like, literally, I went to Reading Festival. So meanwhile, something happened which caused me to move away from Bath um, on a permanent basis, which meant I had no fixed accommodation. So basically, I was staying in Southampton, but literally, I managed to get a place in Southampton. And basically, from there, I was the Reading Festival was on, so I was like, okay, I had it in my mind that I wanted to go on a mission to Reading Festival. There was a couple of people that I was going to go with, but they ended up getting nicked so they couldn't come and then they got put on fucking tag and all that shit so they got curfews and this and this and this but um I ended up just going on my own but I was just sitting in Southampton like what the fuck am I doing like I'm so bored like literally I'm so bored like I'm wanting the Amsterdam vibes but I'm not getting it like literally the whole time I've just been chasing the Amsterdam vibe and it's just not happening and I was just like, fuck this, like, fuck England, it's a piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. But then I had to remember why I came back to England and, like, what I was doing here and, like, why I left Amsterdam in the first place and that I wasn't after the fucking liveliness anymore. I wanted to just take things slow and just being able to, like, do you know what I mean, communicate and things like that. So I had to just keep reminding myself of this. So I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to go to Reading. Like, it was, like, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, I'm just gonna go. All I had is like a little man pouch here. And like, I broke in and like, it was decent. Like literally it was really decent. And then fucking, I was chilling with this group. And then obviously we left the main arena and then they went to their campsite. So I was like, fuck it. Let me check out the campsite. And then I was like, no, nah, it's kind of dead. Like, the music is still popping. And, like, I didn't really know that about festivals and things like that. Yeah, I've worked festivals, but it's different when you're working them because, like, you just have access to everywhere. You don't have to think about, oh, I can't go here, I can't go there. Like, doing security is just a lot easier because you just know the whole festival. And, like, you get the layout, you get the plans, you get a map, you get all, like, the security points, like... Yeah, you know what's going on on the site, whereas this time I didn't because I was just going for myself to have fun. So, basically, I tried to get back into the main arena without a wristband, but there was no people 
through in the marquee, like literally it was such an amateur move and I should have known this already, like I should have known this but I just fucking didn't think about it. But yeah, there was no people going through. And I was like, fuck. Anyway, they caught me. And I was like, oh, you're detained, blah, blah, blah. They took my grinders, this, this, this. Oh, mate, it was so peaked. Like, I was so pissed off. But... It was like... It wasn't that deep. Because I was chilled about it in the end. And then once the boss left, everyone was calm. Like, do you know what I mean? They gave my shit back. Well... Some of my shit back, not all of it. There was still grinders and the fucking other stuff that was gone, but it's all right. It's all right. Anyway, I got kicked out, I literally, and they just put me in, like, this Land Rover, drove me out, and then that was it. Like, you, they go into, like, a, some sort of fucking port cabin, and there's literally just a lady at a desk, like, one desk in a room, and then she's like, okay, wife being kicked out, blah, blah. And then I was, I was like, I don't have a wristband, and I was like, what? Like, I don't have a wristband. I was like, okay, fine, you can go. Because normally they just take bare details, but because it was so, like, it wasn't, like, nothing bad, it was, I didn't have a wristband, that's it. Like, they just chuck you out. So from there, fucking, I was like, okay, cool. And then fucking, I was walking around, walking around, walking around, and I was like, oh, mate, what should I do? What should I do? It was getting quieter and quieter, because obviously everyone was just getting taxis. Then I walked around back to the fucking um, canal, like the water, the river. And then there's like a monument, like a statue thing, and like, there's just bare people just chilling there with music. So I was like, shit. So I just started turning up with them. And then I met this guy called Chris. Bearing in mind, when I first broke in, I broke in with this one guy. And then fucking, he just disappeared, like, literally, he just disappeared, like, he just left, like, I just lost him in the crowds. And then, so I ended up chilling with this other group, like, literally, who got me into the main arena in the first place, because they all had wristbands. And then fucking, yeah, I was just chilling out with them. So, the second time I broke in was with this other guy called Chris, but then he was, like, had six other people, because they'd also been kicked out, because they only had um, day wristbands, they didn't have weekend wristbands, so... They did have a form of wristband, but just not the correct one. So it was a lot easier for them to go through the checkpoints because obviously they had a wristband on and they wasn't checking everyone. So, like, it was like a dead of night. Like, it was a dead of night. And, like, everyone was just fucking waved and just noisy and just playing music. And then someone came up asked us for cigarettes. So we gave them cigarettes and then we was just chilling with them, smoking weed. And then we went back in and I was like, okay, right, do you guys want to get in? Because I'm going to break in. And I was like, yeah, we're going to break in. So I was like, okay, follow me. So I took them the route, we got in, and I was like, fuck it, you may as well just come chill at our campsite. You've got us in, so we might as well just stay with you. So I was like, okay, cool. So I was chilling with them, and I met their whole group, and then we just spent the whole festival together, really, just going around, like, listening to all the music and that and that and that. And then, fucking, the end of the festival, everyone left. I didn't spend the last night with them, because I stayed at another camp, camping area. And, yeah, and then, fucking... After that, I went back to the campsite, said goodbye to everyone, and then, yeah. Now, this is the bit I want to address. Because, basically, on my Snapchat, I put a fucking snap of all the fucking stuff I managed to get from Reading Festival. And a lot of people got fucking moody and fucking shitty about it. Because fucking, they uh, said, no, why do you steal people's shit? Why do you take everyone's luggage? Blah, 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 blah. No. For starters, they're doing this whole fucking drive thing of fucking save the planet and I don't know where it's come from. Like, I'm happy about it, but obviously there's always other agendas when they suddenly just make everyone wake up and become alert to things. But, it's a good thing. But, the point is, um, people would leave their tents and they had these signs saying like, um, 10,000 tents is the equivalent to 300,000 plastic straws. Please take your tents behind. Like, please take your tents with you. Don't leave them behind. So, like, they don't want people leaving their shit there because, obviously, it costs a lot of money to, like, have it removed and properly recycle it and dispose of it and, like, do whatever they do with fucking disused tents that are all fucking smashed up. So, basically, there was just bare expensive tents, like, just bare shit that just people would just leave behind. So, I went round and I went round taking it all, right? And I had it on a massive trolley and I must have bought about maybe seven tents 
fucking some sleeping stuff, mattresses, pillows, like all inflatable stuff, fucking inflatable chairs and shit, like footstools, yeah, just bare camping equipment basically, and a power bank, and some leads and shit for your phone charger, and some plugs, that was it. And people got well salty, and I can imagine people can say, well, it doesn't belong to you, blah, 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 but there's literally, I took seven tenths, right, and there's literally like fucking... There was over 100,000 people there, so you can imagine how many tents there are, and I took seven. They're literally tents, as far as the eye can see, there was eight fields for camping, like, as far as the eye can see, is tents, like, I didn't even make a dent, and I literally was dragging bags down the street until eventually I found a red trolley. So, basically, like, fucking... Like, I got caught by security because I didn't have a wristband once again, so they was like, oh, where's your wristband? And I was like, oh, I don't have one. And then basically, fucking, they was like, oh, you need to leave. You need to take all this stuff that isn't yours, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, yeah, but like, I can give this away to homeless people. And also, I can have some for myself when I'm without accommodation myself. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough, blah, blah. Because basically, the argument was there's a charity that gets first refusal on festivals to go and take the stuff, and then they can either resell it or give it away to their charities and their people that they want to give charity to but as far as I'm concerned like if you have someone that comes to you and says right give me four tents I know where I can give these tents up to why don't you just give four tents and you can just straight away cut out the middleman rather than giving money to a charity and then relying on them to just give out the money equally like you're better off just going to the source taking what you want to give go to the source and just give it to them but literally so anyway he was like fuck it he gave me a lift on his car out of the site but literally because it was fucking boiling hot the site is miles and miles and miles and I was literally just having to like trek it with these bags, put it back, go do a relay, put it back, trek back, put the more bags back. Like at least that's how I was moving across the site. It just took me fucking ages. Anyway, like literally, eventually got a lift on a fucking buggy out of the site and I was just fucking waiting there thinking, right, I've got to get to the fucking train station with all these bags, what am I going to do? So I literally just sat there just fucking literally chilling, smoking, blazing. And then fucking... After that, like, fucking, I saw these group of girls that were wheeling a trolley with their dad, like, a red trolley, and fucking, like, it was a metal one, and, like, they was taking it to their car, and I was like, oh, I really need that trolley, because I was sitting chatting to this guy who was also waiting for his mum to pick him up. So, fucking, like... I saw them, yeah, and the trolley wasn't fitting, so I was kind of being a bit booky because I was just staring at them, and I was just like, what the fuck? And then their mum was getting well paranoid, and she was, like, poking the dad, like, that guy's just staring at them, staring at us. And I was like... Because I could see it wasn't going in, and I wanted to ask, but I just didn't know how to ask them. And I was just like, oh, mate. I was just bare tired, and I just stressed from walking, and I was just like, fucking... I now need to get back to Southampton, like, literally, from Reading, and it's just like, fucking... Anyway... Like, literally, so I went over to them and I was like, oh, sorry, like, I just seen the trolley, like, could I possibly use it? Because it, if it's not going to fit in the car. And he was like, yeah, fuck it. And he just pulled it out because he was trying to slide it in, but it was just the wheels that were sticking out, so maybe it was going to tie it up. And he was like, yeah, sure, mate, you can have it. And I was like, yeah, sorry. I was just, like, looking because I saw you walk it across. And he was like, they just found it funny. They were just laughing in the end because, like, they just, they, they wasn't expecting it. So, they was, so I literally packed up all my stuff on this trolley wheeled it to the station now it's a case of having to get through the barriers at the station well, literally with no ticket so anyway i managed to do that and then fucking get on a train but you've got to get on a train which is not a virgin train or it's not a bullet train because obviously the the platform and the ledge is like super high and obviously i've got a massive trolley it's fucking heavy so only certain trains are like really low like the small shitty box trains are really low to the platform so you can just literally pull it up and it's not that much of a gap to pull it up over anyway I managed to get on a train and I managed to make it all the way back to Southampton from there I went back to Bath briefly but I was just backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and then then fully came back to Bristol but then with that I was going backwards and forwards to Bristol anyway because I was going to the carnival I was going to events that was going on during the summer a few parties street parties and festivals and things like that so yeah once I'd done that I come back here fully, and then fucking now just chilling, relaxing, and vibing out. However, like I've been driving a lot with a van and that, so 
it's just a case of like I haven't had the chance to actually do stuff and make videos and I just haven't been smoking as well so I've just literally just been fucking constantly just doing stuff and just fucking just always about like literally and then obviously I went on that mission to fucking everywhere <laughs> literally and then fucking yeah that was that but missions will be fucking continued like literally they will be continued at some point but now i'm just back in england i've kind of got my feet settled on the ground and i haven't really been going anywhere like literally i've kind of just been playing it safe like literally so yeah that's that like this year i'm sorry i haven't uploaded and i'm sorry it's been long i've had a few questions actually yeah, as well um someone was asking about fucking um the prison situation um when i'll be making a part two part two will be coming um, and also there was a question um, of, what was they saying, uh, languages in prison, like, could people speak English um, in a Dutch prison, uh, actually, and the answer is yes, like, they could speak English because most people learn English anyway, as well as learning Dutch, so, yeah, most people could communicate in English, um, inmate-wise. But um, the staff, yeah, could all speak English anyway. Like, literally, they all speak English. So, yeah, it wasn't a problem for me. But, yeah, if you have any more questions, then please do leave them in the comments below because I'll be making another Q&A where I'll just go through and answer some, answer some questions um, that have been posted on videos. And, yeah... Say for all your positive feedback and for all your comments and yeah <laughs> that is that literally I think I'm gonna leave it there but I just wanted to quickly come on and say what one basically but yeah and my battery is running low so perfect timing anyway stay blessed stay lean and peace <laughs>